Principles of Fracture Mechanics Critical Stress for Propagation of a Surface Crack All brittle materials contain small cracks of various sizes and orientations. When a tensile stress at the tip of one of these flaws exceeds the critical stress, a crack forms which propagates resulting in fracture. We need to know this critical stress so the applied stress can be kept below this value. A quick real world example would be a glass floor or a wall. You must know the maximum stress or the critical stress it can take or else it could fail under an applied tensile stress. Example. If the specific energy for silicon carbide, SIC, is 32 joules per meter squared, using the data entry for the silicon carbide, compute the critical stress required for the propagation of a surface crack of length 0.14 meters. Here we have our data entry for the silicon carbide. We're given the fluctual strength of 141 megapascals over here. And we're given the modulus of elasticity for this material as 345 gigapascals. First off, we're going to determine what we need to find. And that's going to be the critical stress. Or the shorthand for that can be sigma c. Next up, we'll isolate what's given. So first off, at the very beginning of the problem, we're given the specific surface energy. And that's going to go ahead and be, we'll call that one, gamma with an S. We're also given the surface crack length at the end of the problem. We can call that one A. And we're given the modulus elasticity in the data entry, which we can call E. Our governing equation for this problem, then, is going to be the critical stress is equal to twice times the modulus of elasticity times the specific surface energy all over pi times the surface crack length. And that expression is going to be raised to the one half power. So that's the equation we're going to want to use because we're looking for this critical stress. That's what we're trying to find. We're given this value, this value, and this value. And the two, the pi, and the one half power are all just constants. So we'd have everything we need to know. Before we can start plugging these values in though, we have to convert units. Our first conversion we want to make is going to be the millimeters to meters. So we have the 0.14 for that crack length, and we want to convert that millimeters to meters, so it's going to be 0.14 times 10 to the negative third meters. Our next conversion we're going to want to do is the gigapascals to newtons per meter squared, so we're using the same units. We're given the 345 gigapascals, and we're going to convert that to 345 times 10 to the 9th pascals. Next up, we need to convert these units. So it's good to know that 1 pascal is equal to 1 newton per meter squared. It's just converting the units. And since it's the 1 to 1 ratio, that 345 times 10 to the 9th is going to remain 345 times 10 to the 9th. But now it's in newtons per meter squared. A little more usable in the problem. The final conversion we need to make then is joules per meter squared to newtons per meter. Just like before, we have a conversion. So the one joule is going to equal one newton per meter. So newton times meter divided by meter squared is going to go to the meters will cancel out there, newtons per meter, which we're looking for. Once you go then, it's a one to one ratio. So that 32.0 joules per meter squared has just become 32.0 newtons per meter. So now we have all our units and something that we can work with. So putting it all together, we'll go to the next page. This is going to be critical stress continued. What's known is that specific surface energy, 32 newtons per meter, the surface crack length, 0.14 times 10 to the negative third meters, and our modulus velocity, 345 times 10 to the ninth newtons per meter squared. We also are trying to figure out what we need. That's going to be the critical stress. And that's going to go ahead and be in our newtons per meter squared, since it's a stress, or something more usable, the pascals, we can convert it back at the end. It's time to plug in our values. So we'll start off with our governing equation over here. That's going to be the critical stress is equal to twice the modulus 
times the specific surface energy divided by pi times the surface crack length to the one half power. Putting all that in, we have 2 times 345 times 10 to the 9th. The units of that one, remember, are newtons per meter squared. And we're going to multiply that by the 32 newtons per meter. And all of this is going to be divided by pi times our crack length, which is 0 0.14 times 10 to the negative third meters. And we can go ahead and raise that to the one half power. Putting those numbers together, you can see that our critical stress is going to be equal to 5.0202 times 10 to the 16th. And then the units of that are going to be newtons times newtons, so newtons squared. And on the bottom we have meters squared times meters divided by meters, so it's going to be meters to the fourth. And all of this is going to be the one-half power. Taking the number to the one-half power is pretty easy, but I'll go ahead and show you the units. So we have newtons squared to the one-half power and meters to the fourth to the one-half power, and that's going to go ahead and go to newtons per meter squared, just like that. So plugging into the calculator, we get our critical stress is equal to 2, 2, 4, 0, 5, 8, 0, 6, 4.7 newtons per meter squared. And like I said earlier, we want to convert that back to Pascal since it's something a little more usable. And like we said earlier, it's the 1 to 1 ratio, so it's going to be the exact same number. 0, 6, 4.7, but now it's in Pascals. Finally, we can write our answer. And that's going to go ahead and be 224.06 mega pascals. So we just moved the decimal over six spots, so the number is a little bit more readable. And that's the answer to the problem. We can do a conceptual affirmation. Silicon carbide is a high quality ceramic, and it's used for turbine components, seals, hot gas flow liners, and some semiconductor process equipment. This high critical stress then that we got right over here, it's reasonable since these applications, in these applications, the material must be able to withstand a much greater stress than a ceramic for, say, a soda bottle or a house window pane. So it makes sense that we have a large value for this critical stress since it is in significantly more stressful situations than, say, a soda bottle.